Hello everyone, welcome to Pause with Phil. I hope everybody's having a good Wellness Wednesday. Uh, sorry about the little bit of delay. Uh, I was trying to figure out some techno technological issues here on, on my end. Um, glad everyone could be here today. I hope everybody is having a good day. And thanks for joining this episode of Practicing the Pause on Wellness Wednesday. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about stress and uh, <laughs> There was a little bit of stress for me logging on here, uh, like I said, technological issues. Uh, and what, what was coming to my mind earlier uh, today was uh, about the power of words. You know, we can describe our stress. Uh, what do you do? Uh, what do you feel like when, when you are stressed? What do you feel like when, when you are stressed? Uh, can you describe uh, uh, that feeling that you might uh, have? Uh, by using descriptors, by using uh, description words. Uh, for instance, like uh, your mind might feel cluttered. Your mind might feel cluttered. You might have trouble thinking. Uh, you might feel impatient. Uh, you might feel irritable, set on edge. Uh, your blood might feel like it's boiling or it feels warm going through your veins and arms, in your arms. Uh, what about panic or anxiety? Uh, that might go along with stress or feeling rushed, uh, not having enough time or uh, feeling defeated or imperfect. You know, some of those things might uh, describe how we feel with stress. And, and I believe by using the power of words, we get some of that power back. We, we can uh, feel empowered just by using our words, by describing how we feel at that moment when we're stressed. Uh, and I, I think this might, might help us. Uh, you know, something I've also done in the past is uh, I've asked folks to describe uh, what it feels like in a color, right? So, so what color might come to your mind when you're uh, discussing and you're talking about stress? How, how, what color comes to your mind when you think about stress? Red, maybe, or a a dark orange, uh, sometimes that helps just to associate it with a color, a, a power of association. What about a shape? If you could think of a shape that might uh, uh, describe your stress, how you feel like when you're stressed. Uh, sometimes just bringing these things to our attention will help us. Uh, like I said, I, I believe in the power of words, be able to describe what you're going through. And uh, maybe you're feeling some stress today. Maybe <laughs> you can relate to the stress I was feeling uh, when I was trying to log on. You know, uh, when I was trying to log on here to go on to Facebook Live, uh, it was saying that something had changed. You know, sometimes we can feel stressed when uh, we're not expecting something, when something's out of the ordinary, when something's off our routine. And it was asking me, you know, to uh, create this app and uh, it, it even had one of those picture boxes, you know, uh, where, where it, it, it asks uh, for you to identify if you're not a robot, you know, so it was, it was asking me to pick out, you know, uh, traffic lights. And then it was asking me to, then the next screen to uh, pick out what, what picture didn't have a bicycle in it, you know, but uh, I, did, I didn't get unrattled. I didn't get unrattled. But a lot of time we, we can when, when changes kind of come out of nowhere, uh, you know, uh, we, when we're not expecting something. You know, sometimes we can come unravel, come unglued. And so uh, I think it's good to use the power of words. Talk about how you feel at that moment, you know, uh, whatever you're going through. Uh, maybe the phone is just going off the hook or, or maybe you forgot something. You left something at the house, you know, and sometimes they can just throw us off. They can throw us off. So I think the power of words, if you can uh, describe, use descriptions, use descriptors of how you feel at that time. You know, uh, my mind feels cluttered. Right, that's why I'm stressed. I, I can't think straight. I'm having trouble thinking. I'm I feel impatient. You know, uh, uh, I'm not getting enough stuff done. Uh, I'm, I'm irritable. I'm set on edge. I, I, my 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 blood feels warm as it's going through my veins there in my arm. Use the scriptures. Describe how stress makes you feel. I think this might uh, give us some of the power back if we can talk about it. Not just I feel stressed, but this is exactly how I feel at this time in this moment. And so I'm glad that you're here to practice the pause today because that's what we don't want to bring in, right? We might've felt stressed at the beginning of the day, 
we might have had some things not go as we saw fit or planned, but now we're intentionally, we're setting set a time, a time to pause, a time to pause, to be still, to not have all those distractions, to breathe and to let go of some of that stress, to let go of some of that worry. Here we're setting a time to pause, to pause, to practice the pause. This is mindfulness. We're bringing awareness to this time, to this moment, setting aside the other things, all the other distractions, and we're practicing the pause. We're letting go of that, some of that stress, and we're going to learn how to do that. We're going to learn how to let go of some of that stress. And so now, as we practice the pause, we started thinking about some of the things, you know, of how stress makes us feel. Now I want us to discover a tool that can help to help relax us and to calm us down, even in those stressful moments, so that we can think straight, so we can think uh, clear. Uh, somebody talked about in this video that I watched about having the, the reptile brain, and they used it as, as their fingers, right? So this is your reptile part of your brain, which wants to run or escape, but uh, doesn't think rationally, right? And so sometimes when we're stressed, that's all we have to work with is that reptile brain because these other parts of our brain that helps us to think clearly go up like that. And so we're, we, we resort back to that reptile brain of, of fleeing or fighting or not thinking uh, rationally. And so what we want to do is we want to help calm ourselves down so we can be able to think rationally and make good decisions there. And we'll talk about that hopefully uh, more as I go along and as I learn it, I can share with you those things, but that's what we want to do now, right? So we might have had stress, we might have been all reacting, you know, the things and, and maybe been irritable or whatever it is. Now we want to calm ourselves down and we want to think and make good decisions. And so practicing the pause, some of this mindfulness can help us to do that. And so now, since we have been talking about uh, what stress felt, feels like, uh, we've been using words, the power of words. Now I want to use the power of our mind, bringing mindfulness, this mindfulness technique, breathing, being safe where we are, right, in the present moment, settling ourselves down, knowing that we're in a safe spot. And I want to help us to do that by practicing mindfulness. So right now, I want you to find a comfortable place. All right, I, I hope that you're in a comfortable place, that uh, you can get relaxed. And right now, I would like for us all to think of a place, get it in your mind. It might help for you just to close your eyes, to imagine, right, to think of a place that helps calm you down, that helps relax you. Think of that place, get it in your mind there. Where's a place that you, you feel comfortable at, where you feel relaxed at, where you feel safe at, a place that helps calm you down. I want you to get that in your mind there. Picture it, picture it, picture the sounds, picture the smells, use your scriptures to help you imagine it. What does it feel like there? What's it feel like? Well, uh, uh, gain some of that image there. Picture it in your mind. You know, I've got a hammock here on my back porch. I've talked about that a lot so far in the past couple of times about creating that environment, creating an environment. I've got a hammock here on the back of my porch and it helps me to relax. Right, I've, I've taken it down uh, for uh, the winter time but you know there in the spring and the summer and and uh you know through maybe the month of october i go out there and i i can relax you know sometimes uh, i can you know rock back and forth in it uh you know and it just it just helps it helps being out there in the fresh air you know it's it's on the it's in my porch there and uh i've got i've got a view where, where i can see some of the stars at night time and sometimes i can look over and I can see the, the mountains there in the background. That's one of my places that I like to go that helps me to relax. What's a place for you uh, that, that you like to go to that helps you to relax? I want you to think of it. I want you to think of the, the sounds, the smells, the, the, the visual there. Think about it in your mind. Do you have that image in your mind? You know, for some folks, it might be the beach. With the uh, with the waves and the sounds of the seagulls and the and the sand and the breeze, 
we talked about that some last time uh, about our breathing. And so right now I'd like for us to do that. You have that calm uh, image in your mind, a, a, a scenery, a place of relaxation in your mind. I want you to stay with that. Stay with that. And then now I'd like for us to breathe. And for some, it might help you to close your eyes to keep that image in your mind. You're in a relaxing place. You're sitting comfortably. And I'd like for us to practice this breathing technique. Let's all breathe in together. Taking a deep breath in and then releasing it out. Let go of that stress. And then continue to have that visual in your mind, that safe place, that comfortable place, that place that brings you calmness and, and relaxation. Think about it in your mind there. Taking another deep breath, slow, deep breath. Imagine the air moving down into your lungs and then back up. Release, release that stress. Let go of that worries. Let go of those uh, uh, need to uh, get things done. Breathe right here in the moment. Bring awareness, mindfulness here in the present, in the moment. Hey, you're taking care of you. You're bringing self-care to your awareness. Breathe in. Take a deep breath. Hold it in for a moment can still think about that calm, relaxing breath. And you know, if your, your thoughts are, are going to the things that you have to get done with all the stresses and things in, 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 in your world, go back to your breath. Be where your breath is, in. Release it out. Go back to your breath, in. Release it out. Focusing on your breath creates a sense of calm and can clear your mind. Like I said, we don't want to be in that reptile part of our brain. We want to be thinking clear in the calm, in the calm there. And so these tools can help us. These tools can help us. And that was one visual image that we can do. So when you're feeling stressed out, anxious, whatever it might be, uh, think about uh, a place there that can bring calm and relaxation. Go back to your breath. Breathing in and then letting go of those stresses. We've talked a lot about environment there. That was one of them. You know, what's so cool too, I was, I was reading, I was reading this book and uh, I want to share with you what uh, this author said. He said, five years ago, I had a beautiful experience which set me on a road that has led to the writing of this book. I was sitting by the ocean one late summer afternoon, watching the waves rolling in and feeling the rhythm of my breathing when I suddenly became aware of my whole environment as being engaged in a gigantic cosmic dance. And you remember what I shared with you last time about the breathing, how it's like a wheel? In, out, in, out. And you remember how I talked about the waves last time too? In and out. Think of it. Hear the sound. Hear the sound of the waves going in, going out. Same with the breath. In and out. And isn't that cool? How I just I just got this book not 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 long ago, maybe a couple of days or a week or so ago. And and here when I'm reading about it's the preface to the first edition there. There in the beginning, he said, I was sitting by the ocean one late summer afternoon, watching the waves rolling in and feeling the rhythm of my breathing when I suddenly became aware, awareness, aware of my whole environment as being engaged in a gigantic cosmic dance. How cool is that, right? And so, you know, when when I was learning these breathing exercises and, and uh, uh, discovering these practices, that's a thought that came to my mind there of the two links with my breathing and then how the ocean goes in and out. And I think that's, that's so cool. And so, you know, uh, like I said before, I want these classes to be practical. I want these to be practical. I don't want to feel rushed. I don't want any of you to feel rushed. I don't want to bombard us with a lot of information. I want us to slowly 
get small doses there, you know, bite-sized portions that we can digest. And, uh, and so that's a tool that we can use there as uh, recalling a place that, uh, and visualizing a place that brings us comfort and relaxation. Uh, stress is something that, that comes. Uh, <laughs> we don't uh, nearly necessarily ask for it, it just, it just happens, it happens. But calmness and relaxation, we have to intentionally seek and go after. And so I hope that you are intentionally going after your, your wellness. And uh, what was so, what was something cool too that happened to me uh, this week, which brought awareness uh, to 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 uh, my mind. Uh, I had a meeting this past week, and one of the ladies asked uh, at the beginning of the meeting. She said, uh, "What are you doing for fun these days?" Sit with that thought for a moment. What are you doing for fun these days? You know, fun is a part of our wellness. Wellness has to do with balance. Are you getting out of balance? Are you uh, having too much on your plate? Too much work where you're not having that fun? You're not having that balance? Uh, you're not uh, maybe exercising? Maybe maybe you're cutting corners there. Uh you know, that's, that's something when she asked me, what am I doing for fun these days? Immediately came to my mind that I hadn't been going, walking in the woods and exercising uh, in, in the past week or two. And that's something I have to intentionally do. I have to seek after. I have to plan it. I have to put it into my schedule that I will be doing this for my personal wellness you know, if we aren't taking care of ourselves, we're not going to be much use to anybody else. We'll burn out. Burnout is a very, very uh, a realistic uh, possibility. We have to uh, intentionally uh, bring awareness and, and, and seek after balance and wellness. And so I hope that these classes, these courses uh, will help us to do that, to continue to look at these things uh, together. Something else was cool too. Uh, a coworker of mine, uh, I noticed, is drinking some teas, drinking some teas, uh, and uh, you know we'll be you know uh, talking about some of those things too. You know, tea, I, I, I found has helped uh, take some of the anxiety and stress off of me. This one's called Tension Tamer. I still haven't got that sponsorship yet from these tea companies. So. <laughs> it helps me though it does these teas help and i just want to pass it along things that have helped me uh that i've, I've discovered in, in uh, my my journey of of combating anxiety and stress uh, all those things so uh i hope some of these things have helped you and uh like i said before if if what you're learning here has helped some uh shoot me a letter email send me an email i, I want to know uh, how how uh you're finding some of the things that we're talking about is helping you. I truly am interested in that. So thank you for being here. Thank you for practicing the pause with Phil and looking after your own self-care. I believe it's, it's important. That's the reason why I uh, teach these classes. I believe it is important. They're at the recovery center. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be doing these each week. I'm so glad that you're here for wellness Wednesdays. All right, let's move forward. Uh, We'll uh, look at some of the things that we've talked about before. Uh, remember, this is a journey. This is a journey. It's not just a one-time thing where we just come in and uh, we're automatically going to be well. No, this takes time, and uh, we can do this thing together. We're on this journey together. You don't have to feel like you're doing it alone, uh, and uh, maybe you are struggling. Maybe stress is just overwhelming you right now. You know, with this past 2020, you know, a lot of folks are under stress, and they might not understand exactly what it is they're going through. And so I, that's why I wanted to, to open up with uh, what stress feels like to us and then using the power of words to describe it. You know, I think when we talk about how we feel, uh, it gives us a power. It gives us some power and some empowerment. And uh, maybe you're looking for, uh, I don't know, somebody to talk to with about these things. You know, you just don't know how to how to handle it. And we all need that support. and. Uh, you know, there at the recovery center, we, we try to help folks. We do, and, and uh, you know, we don't want anybody to, to uh, get, get into a bad spot, you know. Uh, it, can, it can easily happen. And so uh, 
this is a journey and we do this together. And I hope that this course is helping you. And uh, like I said, uh, maybe you just want to uh, shoot us an email, whatever it is, uh, and uh, let us know. Let us know. Uh, like I said, 2020 has been rough and we're still in it. We're not out of the woods yet. So uh, stress is a reality. It is reality. And, and folks handle stress differently. Uh, some will resort to uh, substance use. So we know that overdoses are, uh, uh, are going up, uh, uh, you know, and uh, it's just tough on a lot of folks out there. So uh, stress, I believe, is an important topic to be talking about. And, you know, hopefully we'll get to a little bit of that today to uh, discover what stress is and, and uh, maybe find some tools about how we can uh, manage our stress and, and get to the place where we want to be. This is a journey. It is a journey. So it's not just a, you know, coming to class one time here or, or watching one of these uh, videos. And, you know, uh, I, th I think each week, you know, we can learn something that's going to help. And I, I'm going to try to do my best to present information that I've learned that's helped me. And that'll be a benefit to you as well. So this is a journey. It's an intro to wellness. We're learning what wellness is. We're learning what wellness is. Um, and uh, it's to educate our audience about the eight dimensions of wellness. Maybe you're not familiar with eight dimensions of wellness. And so uh, we talk about that and we'll focus on a dimension each month, providing tips and strategies that we can all apply to our own lives. And uh, that'll be a benefit to us all, I believe. So, uh, you know, I hope <laughs> maybe you're, uh, you found that teas are working for you. Uh, you maybe you're creating that environment, aromatherapy. You know, I've got... Uh, uh, some candles and some scents. You maybe you've never heard of aromatherapy. You know, uh, uh, smells and stuff can help us relax. Uh, maybe you've gone into uh, the woods and you, some of the smells help you. That's why when we were opening up uh, uh, the course this time, I wanted you to visualize not the sights and the smells and, and even the sounds. Aromatherapy, music. I've got music here in the background that can help calm you down. What are some things that you do to help calm you down to create that environment? environment is is big and that's one of the dimensions environment and uh we'll learn about some of those dimensions as we go along here uh we talk about personal development how wellness uh, uh is is similar to personal development uh wellness i've learned is growing into the person that we want to become and i've shared about that before too uh, in the past that uh, you might maybe hear that compliment. Uh, uh, I'm happy in the person that you are becoming. You are becoming. Wellness helps us on that journey of who we want to become. Uh, and so the question we've asked before, are you living well? Are you living well? How's your sleep habits? Are you uh, making any changes there? Uh, eating habits. Making any changes there. What are you doing for fun these days? It's a great question. Great question, uh, and, and know that uh, uh, we're all here doing this journey together. We talked about uh, before about the documented American tragedy, how uh, there's uh, suicide, uh, suicide initiation, some of these shootings that's going on, you know, with the schools there in the past. So we looked at 2013, that there was 4,600 children who died by suicide. And we looked at uh, prevention. If we can maybe get in the school systems and uh, teach some of these mindfulness exercises, these breathing exercises, uh, uh, we, can, we can make a big difference, I think. One in five children will have a severe and debilitating mental disorder by the age of 18. And uh, research has been done and studies have been shown that prevention uh, plays a huge part uh, and that we can make a, a big impact on these things. So it's important. Wellness is important. There's a reason why I do this, the reason why I'm teaching these classes and and I have a passion about it because it is so important. I found that it's uh, been very beneficial to me in my recovery journey. So I just want to pass some of the things along and as we, as we uh, do this together, as we take this journey. Um, wellness here is talking about uh, continuing self-improvement, continuing. You don't stop with wellness, you continue it, you continue it. Uh, you continue to look at some of these uh, dimensions in your life. That's why I brought up Sleeping. How's your sleeping habits going? How's your eating habits? How's your exercise? What are you doing for fun these days? Wellness searches for new levels of excellence. So new. Well, maybe some of these uh, things we're not used to. We're learning new ideas. 
that's part of wellness intellectual wellness we're learning new ideas but we don't want to just learn about them we want to apply them in our lives as well uh i shared this what i uh, saw on one of our friends one of our partners who uh, uh helps those in recovery and who are in recovery themselves says this a recovery begins exactly that moment when you are broken to pieces and must surrender to unfamiliar and uncomfortable ways in order to rebuild and to, to be rebuilt into who you were meant to be. So we've got to start somewhere. We've got to start somewhere. And a lot of times uh, we don't necessarily look and make some of those changes until we necessarily have to. Uh, pain is a powerful motivator. Pain. That's what got me uh, uh, to look at my recovery and to, to get into recovery. It was pain. I had enough pain. I had to do something different. I'm so glad and thankful that, that I did. Uh, we talked about Aristotle's quote in the past there that uh, we are what we repeatedly do. So we've got to form good habits, new thinking patterns. We are what we repeatedly do. This is repetition. If you, if you might have noticed, I'm going over some of the things we have in the past. This is repetition. Repetition, I believe, is a powerful teaching tool. It helps us to learn and to recall some of these things. Repetition. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act but a habit. Are you forming good habits? How are our habits going? Uh, are, are we having a, a, a perspective change, a new outlook? Uh, are we creating these new circuits in our brain called neuroplasticity? We do this in recovery. We're creating new habits. You know, one of the things I was told there in early recovery is, and have to keep an eye on is uh, people, places, and things. I had to change it all. People I hung out with. Places I went to, things I was doing, uh, I had to create new social contacts and all that. Everything had to be new. There's a lot of, everything had to change. Nothing changes, nothing changes. I was told, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is an art won by training and habituation. The exercise can <laughs> feel tough if you're not used to doing it. And what wellness stresses is that I've learned. Uh, the universal law, the first universal law of wellness is this, is the law of esprit. It means joy. And so uh, it shouldn't be so much of a discipline where I'm, I'm striving to do these things. There's got to be some joy in it. And so if you're saying, wow, I really need to exercise. I need to do this and this and this. I'm going to go to the gym, you know, four times a week and do all this and that. Start off small. Start off small. I believe that's the way where we can continue on. Uh, with what we're doing we've got to we've got to make a good start and so uh you know for me starting small uh, for exercise could be just getting out there and walking taking a couple steps going you know like i said to a place that i enjoy going to which for me it would be walking through the woods you know where i could clear my mind and all those things so uh that's why i've shared about in the past that uh, how these dimensions are are all connected like a wheel so my physical dimension, me getting exercise, also helped my uh, uh, mental wellness, right? It helped uh, the way I felt, the way I thought. All these things are, are connected, are connected. Excellence is an art, won by training. Do it by small steps, small steps, and habituation, making a habit out of it. We do not act rightly because we have virtue excellence, but we rather have those because we have acted rightly. Action, take action. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. A habit. We're creating new habits. And uh, we're all in the process. Like I said, start small. Start small. I've shared about that in the past. Uh, uh, you know, not, not creating too big of goals. Just little accomplishments each day will get you to where you're going. And for me, in, in early recovery, I, like I shared before, it could be just getting up and making the bed. That was an accomplishment for that day. Something I could say yes I did something. I, I did something productive, and it feels so good to to do that. Uh, that kind of gives you some of that feel goodness. What we're we looking for uh, is that dopamine there in the brain, creating new uh, new dopamine. We, we got to do it. We got to do it. Serotonin, whatever it could be. All right. Uh, we looked at this illness wellness continuum in the past. Look there in the left hand corner. I know last uh, last week I wasn't I didn't have my slides up where they needed to be, and I got a text message. And I'm so thankful there for the 
good folks there uh, who I work with are able to send me a text and saying, whoa, we don't see uh, what you're sharing there. And I was able to pull it up with uh, stress, right? Right. Stay calm, cool, collective. C the three C's. Calm, cool, collective. How do we do with that? Look at the uh, top left-hand corner there, the Ill illness wellness continuum. We'll be looking more and more at that as we go along. It's the wellness paradigm, right? So uh, where I was before I was on recovery, I was going toward the left. See what the left is? Premature death. Uh, the three that I learned there on the course that I was going when I was in substance use was jail, institution, and death. Premature death. Look at the signs, symptoms, and disability. Signs, symptoms, disability. You're going towards a premature death. But then recovery. Guess where I need to be heading? Towards the right. All right. Look towards the right. Towards the right is awareness, education, and growth. What I like to use here in this course in the class is eat, education, awareness, and tools. Right, and we want to be moving towards the right, high level wellness. Wellness, we're making some changes in our life. We're going the opposite direction, we're going the opposite direction. The wellness toward high level wellness, and we'll talk about what high level wellness means. Look, uh, look at the signs there below it. Wellness this way, illness is going the other way. We looked at what health says. The difference between the health. Is like a negative uh, uh, message we can hear sometimes. We can tell ourselves, all right? So health says, you know, exercise so you don't get sick. Wellness says move your body to feel strong. And, you know, when uh, when that lady uh, had, had mentioned, what are you doing these days for fun? My mind automatically associated fun with me going out and doing self-care, exercise, walking in the woods. What a difference. You know, what a difference my thinking has, has, how it has changed, how it has changed since I've been on the recovery journey, since I've been learning about wellness. I associated fun with self-care, going out in the woods and walking. How cool is that? And it brought awareness that I hadn't been doing that in the past two weeks or so. You know, sometimes we make excuses. Well, the weather's too cold or, or whatever the case may be. We've got to intentionally put it in our plans. This is what I'm going to be doing this day for self-care. I want to take a time out for me. It's not selfish. We've got to look after ourselves before we can take care or help anybody else. Our wellness has to be a priority. Recovery has to be a priority. And that's one question that I, I've shared so many times with others is what am I doing today for my recovery? What are you doing today for your wellness? Wellness. We're bringing awareness to these things. Education, awareness, tools. We want to learn all three of these inside this course. And I'm uh, so excited to share that these things with you. Look at the opposite. What's the opposite of illness? The opposite of illness is wellness. That's so cool. You know, one of my coworkers I, uh, made that... Uh, the image there, I think, and uh, I've decided to share it. Like I said, I'm so excited and grateful for the folks that I work there at the recovery center, R3 Recovery Center. Yes, yes, yes. We uh, we uh, hold to these wellness principles and dimensions there, and and uh, we're all doing this thing together, this journey together. It's so awesome. The opposite of addiction is connection. Do you have those connections? We shared uh, something this past week about connection. You know. Uh, so many folks are isolating these, uh, you know, this past year, we've got to make sure we're, we're making connection and, and that's look different, right? So that can cause stress, you know, we're doing online, you know, a lot of stuff online and, uh, you know, some folks just aren't used to doing those things, you know, and so, you know, sometimes we have, we have to be like a chameleon, you know, adaptable to our environment, ad adaptable, you know, flexibility, you know, and, uh, you know, learn, learn how to, how to go with what life, uh, uh, throws at us sometimes, you know, and, and learn how to deal with it. We're on life's on life's terms. Living life on life's terms. This is good tea. Good tea. Yes, make sure you try some of that tea. All right, we uh, opened up with this last time. 
uh, what surprised humanity the most? Uh, you know, I think this is attributed to Dalai Lama, but a lot of people question if it was actually the Dalai Lama who said this. But what's, you know, somebody was asked what surprised them the most about humanity. And they said this, that man sacrifices his health in order to make money. You know, maybe they're not aware of their wellness Maybe they haven't asked them the question what they're doing for fun these days. Maybe it's all work and no play. Listen to this. What surprised them about humanity the most? Man sacrifices his health in order to make money. Then, towards the end of life, whenever he gets those health problems, guess what happens? Then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. We got a health dilemma here in, in, uh, in this country. So that's why I hope wellness will help us to to take a look at man sacrifices his health in order to make money then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health and then he is so anxious about the future there's that stress anxiety so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present the result being that he does not live in the present or the future he lives as if he is never going to die and then dies having never really lived. And so wellness, that's why we start the way we always start, practicing the, the breath, being present in the moment. We want to enjoy the present, enjoy the present. You know, I've, I've heard too that if we're living in the past, that's depression. If we're living in the future, that's anxiety. So we need to become aware, be mindful of the present, be where our feet are, here and now. And so uh, that's why I try to make those uh, advertisements promoting uh, this wellness course and saying, take a time out, time out for self-care, time out for self-care. We've got to be mindful of it and to plan accordingly. So we learned about this guy last time. Greg, Greg Anderson, remember I, I, I shared that he uh, got cancer. He got cancer and uh, uh, he was given 30 days to live. And so he learned wellness as a necessity, as a necessity. And he said this, wellness is not a medical fix, but a way of living. It's a lifestyle, it's a lifestyle, a lifestyle sensitive and responsive to all the dimensions, body, mind, and spirit an approach to life we each design. Uh, we're all, all differently. We're all in different journeys uh, on this wellness uh, continuum. And so it might look different for each one of us. Uh, we're all unique individual. And so we design this uh, journey uh, so we can achieve our highest potential for well-being now and forever. I, I like that quote. That's Greg Anderson. I've been reading some uh, things from him. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, uh, what he's learned and now he's, he teaches wellness and so it's it's awesome he took that wellness journey and uh, it changed his life it saved his life so uh, I'll try to stress the importance of what we're learning here about wellness living a wellness lifestyle living wellness is a lifestyle uh, we talked about the enemy within last time uh, you know with all these talks about uh, coronavirus uh, you know so many uh, we so many times we think that the health problem is just out there, uh, that it's invading germs and foreign bodies. Uh, but uh, we come to learn here with wellness that uh, there's a different enemy. It's uh, the enemy within. As Pogo the Possum has, has said, we have met the enemy and he is us. He is us. Uh, that's, uh, you know, some of our behaviors and our choices have to be changed. We do it to ourselves. The enemy is within. Uh, the vast majority of our ills is because of our actions and our own behaviors, uh, our way of thinking. Uh, thinking needs to be changed. Uh, believing, our beliefs need to be changed. Emotions, uh, dealing with stress, uh, uh, and habits. Habits need to be changed, macro and micro. Uh, and so uh, we're looking at stress. Uh, today, uh, the next uh, little bit of time that we have, uh, 
Uh, constant, constant unresolved stress. What, what happens when we have constant unresolved stress? Uh, we develop characteristic imbalances, imbalanced. A lot of times when we feel stress, we, we're not balanced, right? We're, we're not in that peaceful state that uh, where we want to be in, where we can think clearly. Remember that reptile mind? Uh, the brain opens up and we resort back to that reptile mind and we don't make good decisions and all that. You know, we're, we lash out at others. We're rational. We're not making good decisions. So we need to get back to that place where we can calm down and, and, and make good choices. What happens when we don't have constant, uh, what happens when we have constant unresolved stress? Boom. We develop, develop these characteristic imbalances, which can lead to health problems. Uh, health heart attacks, for instance. And this is this is new, really. They, uh, you know, this had been we hadn't known about stress. What stress can lead to uh, for for a long time. Uh, uh, this is this is uh, fairly new. This is new science, new uh, 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 new discoveries that we've we've come across that stress can can actually impact our health. The way we feel emotions can impact our health. It's cool. It's cool stuff. It really is. A, we're learning, and, and I think uh, hopefully we'll continue to move in the right direction as we look into wellness. So constant unresolved stress. Boom. What the brain does there uh, can develop characteristic imbalances and cause health issues like heart attacks. Uh, it can lead to harmful habits. Uh, you know, maybe you feel when you're stressed out. Uh, if some folks go to the ice cream, right? They get a whole big old thing of ice cream and you know, uh, <laughs> before you know it, they, they finish off the carton of ice cream. Uh, some will resort to uh, drinking, right? Uh, uh, or smoking. You know, some, some will smoke more, right? You ever notice when you get stressed, if you used to smoke or you still smoke, you know, you're, you're smoking a lot more? Yep, stress. Stress. What does it cause us to do? I want us to think clearly about these things. All right. And what can also be a harmful, uh, uh, some of these characteristic imbalances uh, that, that leads to relationship issues. You know, if you're always stressed out, you know, uh, maybe you're taking it out on others around you. You know, you're lashing out, you're getting angry, you're yelling. You know, who wants to be around that? It can cause relationship issues. It can cause depressions. You know, uh, uh, you know uh, if you're lashing out at people they don't want to be around you, it can cause you to lose, you know, your house, your home, whatever it is, and cause depressions, uh, and leads to poor decisions. You know, like like uh, how we opened it up with, you know, uh, I want to bring awareness uh, to uh, uh, how we feel when we're stressed, and uh, you know, uh, one of the first things we said was your mind's feel cluttered, or you know, you have trouble thinking. It can lead to poor decisions. Poor decisions. When I'm stressed, I I, I uh, feel like I'm I'm trying to. Uh, 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 manage things, you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to uh, do too many things at once. So I'm not present in the moment and concentrating on my, what I truly need to focus on one thing at a time. One thing at a time. There goes that reptile, right? There goes the brain. Not thinking clearly. Resort to that reptile brain. Stress. Stress. What is it? How do we deal with it? Uh, the enemy within the enemy within so it's not so much these invading germs but it's our choices our actions our behaviors emotional freedom have you ever heard that before emotional freedom sometimes we talk about emotional sobriety and recovery you know when uh i was getting uh when i was on the recovery path and learning about these things uh I thought, you know, yeah, I'm getting sober from, uh, I'm, I'm not using substances anymore. I didn't know about this whole thing, emotional sobriety. But when I put down substances, uh, I started becoming more and more aware that I needed to make more changes in my life. Part of that is being balanced and uh, emotional sobriety, emotional sobriety. Uh, you know, in recovery, you know, especially early on, uh, it feels like our emotions can be just so many highs and lows, you know, uh, uh, heights and then huge dips. And I needed to learn how to kind of balance those things out to create some balance. And so I needed to learn about emotional freedom and 
emotional sobriety and uh, some of these things uh, that I learned and I'd like to share uh, with you all. Remember that this is a journey. So I'm not trying to go too fast with any of these things. And that's why I use repetition. That's sometimes why I go back and I review some of the things we've talked about. So I think rep repetition will help us to learn and, and to uh, recall some of the things that we've learned. This is a journey. Uh, it's attainable. It's attainable. Um, uh, one of the books I was reading about emotional freedom sobriety says uh, it's a journey where you can embrace more happiness peace and mastery over negativity than you may have ever known. And then that what we all are looking for, you know, uh, when I was, uh, uh, when I finally found that peace, uh, I didn't know I was looking for it at the time when it finally, uh, I finally found it. it is the greatest thing in the world. And that's what I continue to, to go after as I know it exists. Peace exists. Happiness exists. And uh, I, I can learn that I, I can uh, have mastery over, over uh, negativity. You know, feelings are fleeting. You know, stress doesn't last uh, all the time. I, but, but I do need to learn uh, some tools and take action. What, what, can, I, what can I do about uh, my stress? What are some healthy things that I, can, I can use? What are some healthy coping mechanisms I can, I can use? It's attainable. You possess the ability to achieve such emotional freedom it's closer than you might think it really is uh uh you know once we learn these tools and we start bringing awareness uh to what we're going through we can we can manage uh, some of these things no matter how stressed your life is currently the time for positive change is now uh just like i was discussing uh, we've, we've got to be uh intentional in uh putting time for our self-care. Remember the enemy within. No one's going to do it for you. Uh, you, 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 you got to do it uh, to, uh, to help yourself. You know, uh, uh, nobody's going to put it in your calendar saying this is a time for you to take out uh, for self-care. Uh, you've got to be intentional and then stick to it. Stick to it. You know, we deserve to be happier to be more comfortable in our own skins, to have nurturing relationships. You deserve it. You deserve it. And so uh, the purpose of what we'll be looking at at emotional uh, sobriety and emotional freedom as we move forward, we'll be looking at ways that we can be empowered. That's why I opened up with uh, words. You know, did you feel more empowered when you began to talk about stress, how it makes you feel, how it makes you think, instead of just saying, I feel stressed? Talk about it. Uh, how, how does it make you feel? Uh, uh, bodily, you know, uh, stress, like I said, can, can it impact your health. It can cause heart attacks and all these things. Now, this needs to be taken seriously. What, we, what are we going to do about it? What changes are we going to implement? And, and uh, that's why I've called it the journey. We don't have to do this alone. We'll bring education, awareness, and tools, things that we can help, that we can start implementing into our lives. We can take action. I want us to feel empowered. Uh, this is your own wellness. This is your own wellness. You have to take care of it. It's, it's fragile. It's fragile. We have to continually uh, bring it to our awareness and, and intentionally see what we can do to uh, stay on that continuum, moving towards wellness, move towards high level wellness, uh, to, uh, to be empowered, to attain this high quality of life and to handle stress artfully. There's a right way to handle stress. Not by lashing out, not by throwing things, you know, all those things, you know, uh, uh, that can cause a lot of destruction and cause a lot of harm too. And so we want to learn how to handle uh, our stress artfully, the art of handling stress. So we will be learning and developing practical new tools for mastering our emotions. Don't let your emotions get the best of you. It's easier said than done. We'll be learning ways that we can learn that emotions are fleeting. They're fleeting. Uh, we'll learn uh, and develop practical new tools for mastering our emotions. Whereas our current conventional coping mechanisms, we're going to have to learn new coping mechanisms. We have to learn uh, uh, new ones. Uh, our, our current conventional coping mechanisms uh, aren't sufficient enough. 
because the way we handle stress isn't sufficient enough. So here we'll find answers to reclaim our happiness and heart. And then that's so good, uh, you know, that, that piece that we can, we can experience that and we can uh, learn about emotional freedom as we move forward and uh, you know, how to handle some of these things. But like I said before, I don't, I don't want to uh, dish out, you know, uh, this information. I want us to be practical and, and continue to learn these things, you know, uh, uh, as we move along. So uh, I hope that you've learned something today, something that you'll start implementing, maybe uh, something that's been brought to your mind, uh, some changes that you would like to see. And uh, I hope that you write those things down. I, you know, uh, I notice if I don't write things down, uh, I can easily forget it. So maybe something has uh, stuck out in your mind as we've been discussing uh, this topic today. And uh, maybe you'd just like to uh, write it down, maybe look into it uh, in the future or, or, uh, or see maybe that's an area that you'd like to make some change with. But uh, I thank you for being uh, present today, that you've taken time out for your own self-care and that you're practicing the pause here and uh, you're looking after your own wellness for this Wellness Wednesday. Thank you for being here and uh, uh, I, I hope that you've learned something today. And again, if you are learning something, maybe you're drinking some teas, whatever it might be, that you would write me. And uh, I, I would love to hear about your journey, your journey in the wellness. Uh, maybe write me there. Uh, uh, you know, the folks, the staff there at the Recovery Center are so good to uh, put my uh, 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 email address there in the comment section. And uh, I hope that you are commenting on these videos. You know, uh, I, I, we're right now we're not necessarily having a discussion that might change there in the future. But when I ask questions about how stress makes you feel, you know, maybe you'd like to comment there in the comment box you know, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, and participate that way. I hope you are learning something and uh, I'm so thankful that you're here. Thankful for the Recovery Center R3 uh, for these talks, for uh, uh, allowing us to have, you know, these teaching tools that we can educate our audience about wellness. And uh, maybe if you are struggling, I know that we're here to help. We are a recovery center there at uh, West Park Drive, 1907 West Park Drive. Uh, please write out to it, write to us, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'll pick up next time uh, on, on uh, this emotional freedom, uh, perhaps, and uh, some of these other things moving forward. So I hope you are learning something and that you're uh, gaining a lot from these uh, courses and these classes. Again, thank you for being here. And remember to practice the pause and to be well. Till next time, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.